it's going to be a continuous flow of intercession. So you, you stay in it. The first area that we want to begin to intercede about is the church. Because God doesn't have a backup plan. He, he doesn't have a second option for what he's purposed to do in the earth. Everything that God is going to do in the earth, he is going to do through the church. And this is why the church is always under attack. And this is why the division and various things attempt to seep into the church because a house divided against itself cannot stand. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So when the church is healthy and united and strong, the very gates of hell themselves cannot prevail against it. So as the church, I want us to pray for the church. And I want to read, I'm just going to read out of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, let me establish something really quickly. Um, the mandate of the church is massive. When you get a chance, I want you to study Ephesians chapter 3 beginning somewhere around verse 9 and read it all the way through. But it talks about how the purpose of the church, first of all, we are stewards of the manifold wisdom of God. We're stewards of the word of God. We're stewards of the decrees of God. We're stewards of the authority of God. And by the Holy Spirit, we have access to the mysteries of God. And the mysteries of God, there's a mystery for every stronghold. That's why sometimes when there's just something that you can't figure out, you just pray in the spirit because in the spirit, the Bible says we're speaking mysteries. The church, the Bible says the church is supposed to, because of our understanding and access to the mysteries, we are supposed to make known to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, we possess the keys of the kingdom and we can literally drive back darkness with the grace that's on our life. This is why the church has to be strong. And this is why the church has to be healthy. And this is why the church has to not be distracted. So I just want to read Ephesians 4. We'll pray into it. Beginning in verse 1, Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which, which, with which you were called. Look at these characteristics. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, not endeavoring to create the unity of the Spirit. The Spirit is all already won. So if we are being commanded to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit, that lets us know that the enemy is going to come in and there's going to be a pull towards disunity. And it's a trap and it's a trick of the enemy. And the only way that we're, we're not going to, the only way that we're going to avoid being divided is to, watch this, be lowly esteeming others more highly than yourselves with long sufferings, right? It says, with all lowliness and, long, and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. He goes on to talk about how everyone has been given the gifts according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he talks about apostles and prophets, and it goes on and on and on. But I want to pray into that. I want, I want us to be a healthy church, not just us as the potter's house, but the global church. And God has given us responsibility and influence over the global church. People watch us from all around the world. So I just want us to stand in the gap. I'm going to take a step back and maybe... Maybe if you can group together in twos and just in your own way for about a minute, I want you to just pray for the church. Pray that we would be one. Pray that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray that we would be focused and not distracted. Pray that we would take our place. Pray that we would walk in our authority. 
Pray for pastors. Pray for leaders. Pray for our bishop. Pray for bishops everywhere. Hallelujah.30 more seconds. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God. God, when we come to you praying for the church, we're not praying for them. We're praying for us. We are your church, God. And Father, we say search our hearts. Search us deep, God. Test our mind. Try our reins. And if you find anything in us, Lord God, that's keeping the full expression of who you are from being seen, remove it, God. Father, we repent, Lord God, not on behalf of them, Shema, but we repent on behalf of ourselves, God. Sometimes we're too focused on us, God. Sometimes, Lord God, we, we don't forgive well. Sometimes we, we let things come out of our mouths that we shouldn't come out of our mouths when you told us let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths. God, train our tongue, God. Lord, you called us to be prophets, God. You called us to speak blessings, God, and, and decree, to decree things and let those things be established, God. Lord, let the breakthrough in our church begin with our mouth. Shiba, And God, we also acknowledge that it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So purify our hearts tonight, God. God, we wanna leave out of here with a heart that's been purified, with a heart, God, that's been consumed with your fire, God. We wanna love like you love. We wanna love what you love, God. Lord, baptize us, God, in your love. Baptize us in your fire, God. Renew our minds, renew our hearts, God. Take us back 
to the beginning take us back to that place when we first got saved God when all we wanted to do was be forgiven all we wanted to do was have a place in your kingdom take us back to that place God that place God where we don't need any blessing we don't need anything all we need is you take us back there God cause us to return to our first love cause us to return to our first works God we beg of you Take us back, take us back when all we wanted was you, when all we wanted was your word, when we were hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Take us back. Take us back. Help us to be living sacrifices. Help us, God, to lay down a little bit. Help us to die a little better, God. Help us to die a little better so that we can live. Help us to get lower that you might raise us up. Help us to see people the way that you see people. Eshimara. Help us to love right. God, we can't love right if we don't have a consciousness of your love. So God, I pray that you would baptize us in your love afresh. That we might love. God, work on us. Not them, not those Christians, not that church, not those believers, us, 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 because all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. We need you, Jesus. We need you, God. Make us hungry for the things of God. Make us hungry and thirsty for you. Take us back to that place where we were completely satisfied with you and you alone. And when we start coming back to life, when we start coming back off of our crosses, remind us of the beauty of being crucified with you. Lord, say it's still there. It's still there. That, that, that sweet place where you were just good, just you and Jesus, is still there. Let's pray into that. We're going to shift. I mean, you really can't shift from that. That's, we got to let that, that perfect work happen all night. But we want to pray for the nations, plural. And Dr. Crumpton is gonna come and, and lead us in, in prayer for the nations, for the nations. The Bible says in Psalm two and eight, God said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. I'll give you the nations, I'll give you the nations. And what is very interesting right now is there's so many, there's so much transition going on in so many nations right now. There are elections in several countries in Africa right now, in Europe, in Eastern Europe. 
uh, all, I mean, I'm just reading is really interesting that, in fact, Botswana's election was today, the 30th of October today. So they're, they're going through their, their transitions and changes, but there's, in the natural, there's shifts taking place in the nations, and I believe that it's significant spiritually. Uh, Dr. Crumpton, would you please? Hallelujah. Go back and with your prayer partners. Come on, we're going to pray together about the nations. We just left Africa, and they are about to go into their elections as well. The tension was high, but God cares about us all. Our e-church represents nations. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. There's not a person he's left out. He loves each and every one of us. Come on, let's pray. I'll let you start praying for the nations, praying for those. Some of you have family members in other nations. Come on, come on, let's pray together. Pray with your partner about the nations and what is going on somewhere else in the world. Not your four and no more but somewhere else in the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight that we are a church that touches the world. You have, uh, you have entrusted us with nations, hallelujah, all over this world. And together we come to hear from you. And as the world is in turmoil right now and as governments are in an upheaval right now. We know where our help comes from. We know who our God is. And the word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Hallelujah. Regardless of what's going on in the nations in the world, Father, we know who we can look to. We know who we can call on. We're not troubled in our hearts and spirits and those that are, we know that our help comes from you. Nation by nation, kingdom by kingdom, at the end of it all, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. There is nothing that can stand higher than you. There is no government that can overrule you. In the end, you have the last say. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, your word says that you will shake every nation and bring out the treasures in the nation. Hallelujah. And we thank you that as you shake us, you will bring forth those treasures that rest in every nation to touch your people, to cause them to be lifted on high, to cause them to be able to service the world because the world needs the church and there is somebody in every nation that represents the kingdom of God hallelujah and as the government tries to shut us down we cry loud we cry out Abba Father to the glory of God our Father in the name of Jesus some of us have loved ones in other, other nations we pray for their protection and their covering. Some of us have other people that we know in other nations. We pray peace over them right now. Hallelujah. And as we join together on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights, as we come together nation by nation, arm in arm, breast in breast, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, that your glory will be revealed everywhere that we're represented in the earth, everywhere that the church is crying out to you, in the earth, God, from the potter's house to their house, hallelujah, that they will hear that Jesus is Lord, regardless of what's going on in your nation, Jesus is still Lord, whatever's going on house. Jesus is still Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may worry about it, but we don't have to because you're ultimately in control. You have the last say. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will lift up a standard against him.
him wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever land we are, wherever we're touching down, you're already there. There's not a people that you don't care about. There's not a person that you don't love. Hallelujah. And we lift up to you right now every nation, those we know about and those we don't, those we've touched and those we haven't. We give them in hands that you might have your way bring out the treasures that'll make a difference in the earth and in the end the nations will walk up right before you in the end the nations will cry Abba Father in the end the nations will shout glory to the God our Father come on church let's praise God that we have an opportunity to touch nations to touch people We're privileged. We serve a big God, a God that trusts us with nations. He trusts us with people, and we pray for you wherever you might be. We lift you up before him. Let God have his way in your life. Let God be God. Let God be God. Don't be controlled by the issues. Let God be God. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, to the glory of God our Father. Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you are the one. You are the one who is seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, you are the one. One that comes with the clouds of heaven. Oh, you are the one, hallelujah. According to Matthew 28, when you got up from the grave and before you ascended into heaven, you told your disciples that all authority in heaven and on earth belong to you. All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. All authority, all authority. You are the ruler of the kings of the earth. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are the faithful witness. You are the firstborn from the dead. Your name is called the Word of God. You are crowned with many crowns. Hallelujah. And you are the one that shall come riding on a white horse. You are the desire of the nations. You are the hope of the nations. You are the light of the nations. You are the life of the world. You are eternal life. The only true God and Jesus Christ. You are eternal life. It is eternal life to know you. It is eternal life to know you. And so now, great head of the church, now, great bishop of our souls, now, great king of kings and lord of lords, we cry out to you on the behalf of the United States of America. We pray in the name of Jesus that you come with your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We thank you that you strike down ancient principalities. Yes, you do. Father, even now, we release our faith. And as a called people, as a chosen people, we recognize that there are ancient principalities that have come across the Atlantic Ocean, even in the time of the Atlantic slave trade. We acknowledge that the spirit of empire and even the spirit of greed has infected and infested everything that this nation has become. Father, in the name of the Lord Christ, we ask that irregardless of what happens in an election, 
Lord, will you overthrow, overthrow, overthrow the principality called greed? Come down, mammon. Come down, mammon. Come down, mammon. You strong man that has infected the soul of the nation. You strong man that brought racism with you. You strong man that brought lasciviousness with you. You strong man that brought violence with you. We say, greed, mammon, the Lord on his throne rebukes you. The Lord rebukes you. I see you tumbling down. I see you falling from your high place. And we declare that according to the word of the Lord, that the poor and the oppressed shall rise into the seat that you have called for them. We thank you that according to Psalm 82, you judge every power that mistreats the oppressed and tramples on the rights of the poor. Oh God, we cry out for every single mother who's working two jobs but can't make ends meet. Oh, we cry out for every family who finds themselves locked in a cycle of debt. Oh, we cry out for every immigrant community. Oh God, every immigrant community. Oh, that has been mislabeled, that has been mistreated. We repent for how we have treated the foreigner and the stranger. We repent for how we've come into agreement with the spirit of violence and bloodthirst. Oh, we repent on behalf of the nation. Here come on the call. And we speak as you have commanded us to speak. It don't matter who we want, but we speak a blessing over whoever is in the seat. If it's Trump, bless him, change him, restore him, deliver him, baptize him, sanctify him. If it's Kamala, keep her, bless her, strengthen her, embolden her. Oh, we pray for the seat. We pray for the seat. Sanctify the seat. Deliver the seat. Yeah. We want the seat. Whoever the nation picks, we declare that the body of Christ is coming for the seat. We will lift our voices against injustice. We're coming for the seat. So, for the next 45 seconds, I need you to praise like you're somewhere around the throne.
on every appointed official strategy, strategy. Lift it, say strategy, 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 strategy. On earth as it is, strategy, 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 wisdom, wisdom, insight, interpretation, strategy, strategy for the perplexing problem. For the conundrum, strategy for the ancient problem, strategy. Now lift your voice if you're crying for it. You can feel it shifting, can't you? The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Another translation says they are powerful and effective. There was a song we grew up singing, all oh, what needless pain we bear because we don't take things to God in prayer. We've obviously touched on it a little bit but we're going to pray more about the government, both local and abroad. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. There's another place that says the city is exalted when the righteous are in authority. There's a righteous one who's in authority. Judge Faith, will you please pray? But before we even do that, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to my Lord and Savior. He is over every single authority, and we give him praise. He's over the kings. He's over the queens. He's over our presidents. He's over emperors. He's over every single entity there is. And we just lift him up today, people. I tell you, we are in a serious dilemma right now and the authorities that's over the land and over this world we got to bring them down so let's pray everybody y'all join me as i pray heavenly father we just thank you for who you are we thank you for who you are father there's absolutely no one like you you are god of gods you are king of kings you are the only one you are the beginning and you are the end, Father. And Father, these governmental authorities, Father, you're over them. You, they, they have to succumb to you. And you tell us over there in 1 Timothy to pray for everybody, and especially kings, and especially those who are in authority, Father. So we come here this moment, this hour, to do just that. Those who are in authority, Father, we're asking you to give them wisdom. That's what you say over there in James 1 and 5. You say if we ask for wisdom, that you'll freely and liberally give it to us. Father, they need wisdom. Wisdom to do the right thing. Wisdom to be able to show mercy. Wisdom to be able to be humbly, walk humbly before you. Just like you said over there in Michael 6 and 8. That's what they need, Father. And Father, we're asking you to anoint them right now. All over the world. Anoint them right now, Father. All over the world so that they can make sure that justice is done, to make sure that mercy is shown, to make sure that they are humble before you, Father. And not only do we need wisdom for our governing authority, Father, we need discernment. Even Pharaoh over there in Genesis 41 talked about what he needed to be able to address that phantom. He needed somebody with a discerning mind. 
That's why he had Joseph to do it. So not only do we need wisdom for them, Father, we need you to give them discernment to be able to know what's right to do. Father, Pharaoh thought he had a problem with a famine. Look at our problems here today, Father. We got poverty, we got joblessness, we got people out on the streets. Father, we have the economy, people are broke, people need money in that bank account. Father, we got problems and we need those in authority, Father, to be able to have the wisdom and the discernment, Father, to do the right by us. So Father, we need you. And Father, not only do we want those in our government authority to have wisdom, to have discernment, we want them to have, to be a person after your own heart just like David was over there in 1 Samuel 13, 14, a man after your own heart. Father, that's what's missing. That's what's missing in our nations. That's what's missing in the world, that they don't have a heart for you. Father, you can do it. You can make them have a heart for you. And if not, you can pick them out Pick them from where they are, pluck them out, Father, and pluck in those who have a heart for you. Just like you say in Proverbs 21 and 1, the heart of the king that like flows like a river, and then you can turn it. You can turn it however you want to turn it. That's what we want for those in authority to be able to have a heart so you can turn it. And when you can turn it, it is your will that will be done, Father. Not theirs, but your will. That's what we want, your kingdom to come on this earth, Father. We want your kingdom to come. Not anyone else, but yours. And it got to begin with those in leadership, those in authority, Father. Reveal to us, us as people, we don't see the hearts. We hear the rhetoric. We hear what they say. We don't see their hearts. What you do, Father, show us the true heart of those in authority. Show us the true hearts of our leaders so that we'll know how to make the decision in terms of who should lead us, who should govern us, who should be over us, Father. So, Father, we need you. We need you. We need revelation. We need revelation. And Father, nothing is impossible for you. That's what you say over there in Luke 1, 37. Nothing is impossible. And Father, you even say in Jeremiah 1 and 12 that you're looking for the opportunity to perform your word. Perform your word in the hearts of your people. Father, we need you this day. Father, we can no longer go things normal. It's not normal. It can't go like it is anymore. And Father, come down and let your spirit touch in this atmosphere and touch not just this nation, but all over the world. We're all interconnected. It's not one nation versus another. We're all interconnected. So Father, we need you to move in a, in a miraculous way on the hearts of those who are in authority. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you the praise, to give you the glory, to give you the honor, because it's only you and only you will do it, Father. Not us, but you. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We say hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise this be your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Father. Glory be to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give him a praise, everybody. Praise his name. Yes. One of the things that I'm sure you're all feeling as well, one of the things that I'm really burdened about is just the, the, the 
the division in our nation. I'm not even perplexed about the difference of opinions. That, that doesn't, I'm not perplexed by that. We're, we're different people. But it is, it's a demonic division. Because it's not, I disagree with you. I despise you. That's Satan. And you can, you can tell because of how it comes out. Anything that is anti-human, you know, there's a lot of talk about antichrist, and that, that's a whole other theological thing. But I think one of the greatest, one of the sure signs of being anti-Christ is anti-people. Because God is love. Right? And the scripture is very, very clear about if you don't have love, God's nowhere in you. So, and it can happen, and here's the thing. Again, this is not a them thing. It can happen to us if we get offended. You look up all of a sudden and you're, so we're going to pray. I've asked Dr. Williams to come and pray for unity in our nation, and our world. And as he comes, he's going to pray. I want you to find somebody that doesn't look anything like you, if possible, <laughs> or someone you don't know. If you are of tender age, find someone that's mature. Some, some distinction, some difference. And I want you to take just about 90 seconds, 20 seconds, introduce yourself, and just pray for our country to be united. Dr. Williams is going to come and lead us in prayer. Oh, my God, I shall do Thank you, Father. 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 As you look down, Father, from heaven, we, your people, are united in prayer, oh God. We are representing, Father, the nations around this world. This is the picture of heaven. people of all color, of all creeds, of all background, of all ethnicities, touching and agreeing, Father, inviting you in the midst of us, O oh God. You've called us into unity. you called us into oneness. And we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Come on, saints, keep praying. 30 seconds. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Because we know what we are doing here is affecting the world. There is a whirlwind coming up out of this place. And it shall impact every nation, every continent, every country, every people, every tribe, every providence, every village. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For the power of unity we thank you and we decree and declare God that you've called us to be together as one as Jesus prayed God we pray the same prayer that Jesus prayed make them one oh God make us one God tear down division tear down things that divide us God everything that keeps us father from seeing you God together God there is no color no gender no male or female God we cast down all the things that try to divide us in the name of Jesus father God and we use the power of death and life in our tongue God and we speak it now God we thank you father for causing us God to come into communion with each other father we understand God that the breaking of the bread is not just a ritual that we do father to commemorate the buying of the cross but we understand that when we break the bread we are reminded that Christ was broken so that we could come together that Christ was broken so that we could dine together that Christ was broken so that we could heal together and that we could live together and we walk Walk in unity uh, and we walk in forgiveness God uh, we forgive each other God uh, for the wrongs God uh, and we break ourselves God uh, from the trauma of our past uh, from the things uh, that keep trying to chain us God uh, to the memories God 
agenda that keeps trying to hold us back uh, from coming together. We come against every divisive thought, uh, every divisive ideology, God. Uh, the words, God, uh, that are coming over the internet uh, and coming over the airways, God, uh, that are trying to pollute, God, uh, what you have called, God, uh, to come into common union. Uh, we break the bands right now, God. Uh, we break the chains right now, God. Uh, we come against the principalities uh, of the power of the air, God. Uh, we come against the things, God, uh, that are coming in our minds, uh, putting thoughts uh, and trying to influence us, God. Uh, we come against it now uh, and we pull down uh, every stronghold. Uh, we pull down uh, every negative thought. Uh, we pull down, God, uh, the things, God, that keep us from coming together in unity. Father, we decree and declare love, 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 the Father's love, the love that makes us look past skin color, the love that makes us look past belief, the love that makes us look past gender. We call love, God, the love that you showed us on the cross. We call love down, not just in the United States, but all around this world. We call on your love because the only way to get to unity is that we have to fall in love with you. So we fall in love with each other, God. We call down love right now. Let your love reign in our hearts, God. We pull out hatred, God. We pull out the things, God, that make us, God, find fault with each other and we call down love 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 the father's love the father's love the father's love the father's love god we thank you we thank you that we're not intimidated uh, by the enemies of this world, uh, but we stand strong in you uh, because you've given us a mouthpiece uh, and we can speak against darkness uh, and we can speak against God the enemy uh, and we can speak against God contaminating spirits uh, and we can speak against ideologies, God, uh, that come against the mind of Christ. Uh, and God, we can call down uh, a new mind, uh, creating us a clean heart. Creating us a clean heart. Give us a heart that forgives. Give us a heart that forgives. Give us a heart that forgives. How can I find unity if I can't forgive my brother and my sister? Give us a heart that forgives. And give us a heart that surrenders. Unity starts when I first surrender my agenda. I give up what I want. And I chain myself to you, God. And so our holding hands it's not just out of tradition, but it is a sign to the world that we find unity in the hands that we hold. God, I cancel every negative thought of the enemy. I cancel every negative word of the enemy. I cancel the ideas that will come up to keep me from connecting with my brother and my sister. I cancel the ideas that will come up to keep me from connecting with those across the aisle. I cancel the ideas uh, that will come up to keep me from connecting with those from other countries. I cancel the idea that will come up for keep me, God, uh, from the spirit of compassion. For you called us not just into unity, but into oneness. That I have to weep with those that weep. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Mourn with those that mourn. Shout with those that shout. So thank you, Father. Thank you that as we worship you in this place, we worship you because we invite the spirit of unity. Thank you that when you see us, all you see is red. You don't see our color, you don't see our gender. All you see is red and that's your blood, Jesus. So we worship you for the blood. We worship you for your blood. Your blood is what unifies us. We worship you for your blood. Your blood is what connects us. We worship you for your blood. Your blood is what unites us. We worship you for your blood because we're all covered under your blood. We're all safe under your blood. That's what we're running to. We're running to get under the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. We're running because that's where unity happens when we get under the blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you. Thank you.
is when we call his name. Yeshua, Jesus, Isa. It's like when we call his name, we're reminded of his person. And when we're reminded of his person, we realize sometimes how far away. I was just thinking as Dr. Williams and we all were praying for unity, Jesus could have prayed for anything when he's on his way out. He's like, Father, th this is my big prayer. This is my big petition, that they would be one. This was his burden on his way to the cross. He's, we're gonna pray. He's on his way to the cross, emptying his life. His life's work. And he says, Father, I pray that they are one. It was almost to say, that if they aren't one, my sacrifice is in vain. Hear me. Out of all the things he could have prayed for, he didn't pray that you be righteous all the time. He didn't pray that you, you live a perfect life and get it. He didn't pray that. He could have prayed that. You think you would have prayed that. He said, if they could just stay together, Nothing could stop them. Earlier he taught, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We're going to shift into something else, but I want to say this. I need you, family, global church family, watch this, to be radically committed to unity. Radically committed. You won't attack somebody, even if you disagree, you won't attack I see some stuff that I completely just, it just I want to vomit when I see some of it, but I don't attack. I want to, but I don't. I, for, for Yeshua's sake, to honor his parting prayer, and there has to be something very divinely brilliant and wise about us being one. Not simply because he said it, because it's under attack. I want us to make a covenant right now that we will not be the one warring against the unity of the spirit that Paul told us to keep. It takes two to tangle. So God, if that means increase my capacity to love, so be it. Do whatever you got to do. But I will not be anti my brother or my sister in the Lord. I, I just, I, I can't. We will never agree on everything. Hello. That's why Paul finally just said, listen, I claim no nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. If we can get Jesus Christ and him crucified, died on the cross for our sins, rose again on the third day, is coming back for us. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. That's a good place to start. Because none of us have absolutely perfect theology. The only one who has perfect theology is the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes our, our theology makes pit stops. And it sits over here. And Jesus says, behold, I do a new thing. I, okay. All of us are looking through a glass darkly. And it's the epitome of pride to claim that you see it clear. When Jesus said, and so he said, I don't even, only the Father knows that. So how are you, okay. So how are you going to have it absolutely, totally, and completely figured out? We're going to move on. We want to pray for families. I've asked Pastors Don and Pastor Phaedra, Phaedra to come forward and, and just pray for families. And they'll lead us in this segment.
from the beginning the devil attacked families the devil attacks what God breathes into from the beginning he has attacked you because of what's in you he has attacked you because you look like God the family is designed to look like God and today we come before the throne and we pray for families hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you for unity in families. We come against the hand of the enemy that will seek to kill, steal, and destroy. We thank you for victory now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every home, God, lining up to your will in the name of Jesus. Yes, we declare crop failure for every negative seed that has been spoken, and we speak life to your people now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, let your will be done that we may represent you daily. Yes. We thank yes. you, God, for order being set where every home is out of order. We declare yes. order now in the name of Jesus. God, give us a submissive spirit, yes. a heart to serve you, yes. a heart to please you, God. Yes. We declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, allow our hearts to be willing daily to please you. Yes, God. We come against selfishness now in the name of Jesus. Let your love rule and reign in every home, God. We declare peace in every home, God. We cause every head to become in alignment with your word now in the name of Jesus. God, everyone that's in that place, we declare peace. We declare that your blood shall cover them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. We come against every wicked spirit, every wayward spirit, every disobedient spirit. You be bound now in the name of Jesus. We speak life to every dead thing, God, that belongs to you. We declare that every home, God, that's represented here and abroad shall become in alignment with you and represent you like never before. We thank you for a joy and a willing heart to serve you. We declare unity now, God, in the name of Jesus. We come against, God, dysfunctional families. Yes, God. We shall function the way you desire for us to. Yes, God. We shall represent you daily. Yes, God. We shall walk with purpose, God, as we're serving you in the kingdom. Yes, God. God, for those things that's not like you and us, we call it into alignment now in the name of Jesus. Yes, we declare unity in every home, over every family, over every child. Be in alignment with your word, God, in Jesus' name. Now, Satan, back up from here. Get your hand off of every family. Get your hand off my son. Get your hand off our daughters. As we fall into an alignment, God, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Every witch be bound. Every warlock be bound. We come against you now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, let the husband line up. Let the wife line up. Let my sons line up. Let my daughter line up. Let my mind line up. We come against every generational curse. It be broken now in the name of Jesus. We declare generational blessing. We declare strategy. We declare winning ways in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we humble ourselves before you, God. Forgive us, God, for every hurt. Forgive us, God, for the wrong that we've done. Forgive us, God. As the man of God, anoint us to cover the wide. Anoint us to be what they need. Anoint us to walk up right in the name of Jesus. Heal every hurt, God. Heal every hurt, God. Restore the family. Restore your vision. Restore the family. Restore your intent. Restore the family. Restore what you intended, God.
No, God, we declare that every stronghold must be broken. We declare that every mind shall be free that is stayed on you. We declare bringing our sons back into the home, bringing our children back into the home. For every future husband, we pray an anointing on their life. For every future wife, we pray an anointing on your life. For every future mother, we pray an anointing on your life. For every future father, we pray an anointing on your life. Father, help us walk past the hurt that may have happened in the past. Help us to heal from every wound that has scarred our mind to make us think we can't live prosperous as you ordained. Heal us, God. And for the ones who have done the hurting, God, we thank you for restoring us. Anoint us fresh even the more. As God, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you even now that we walk in victory. My marriage is going to work. My family is going to work. My anointing is going to work. It's going to destroy the yokes of the enemy. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to be okay. Something shifted and broke. I see prodigals coming home. I see, I see young people that you thought were not getting it. They weren't hearing it. They fought against it. And the reason why they fought against it so much is because it was hitting them in a deep place. I feel that. For somebody, you're here, you're watching via live stream, God is turning it around. Don't give up on that child. Don't give up on that situation. Something is happening. I'm evidence of that. We're going to pray for the next generation. We're going to pray for the next generation. And I've invited four people to come up. They're going to just shotgun prayer as the Spirit of the Lord leads them. I thank God for Pastor Vinchard Dobbins who stepped in. We had some transition. He stepped in, has taken the leadership of Firehouse, is doing an incredible job. And his right-hand man in Firehouse, Taylor, is here as well, doing incredible things. And then there's a young couple that also represents the next generation. Ty and Ren Headley are here. And I just want, I just want, they literally, rep, they are the next generation. And I just want you to come as you're led by the Spirit and just pass the mic around with the time that you have. And just pray that burden that's on your heart. Come, come forward really quickly. While they're coming forward, just take a minute or two and just get with someone. And just begin to pray for the next generation. Whatever burden is on your heart, I just want you to agree with somebody for the next generation. We have not forgotten about them. Pastor. Glory to God. I feel led of the Spirit of God to give you Malachi 4 and 6. God's going to turn the heart of the fathers back to the sons, back to the children. And he's going to turn the heart of the children back to the fathers. What good is you praying for your children if they don't ever get it? I feel led to yield my time to the next generation. I typically pray that God will give your children the leadership of Moses, the boldness of Joshua, the faith of Sarah, the courage of Ruth, the birthing of Mary, the anointing and the wisdom of Elizabeth, the vision of Rhoda. I pray that God will give fire like Jeremiah. God anointed us. And he allowed a young man to come to college. We met in high school. He was in high school. It was his dream to meet Bishop Jakes. His teacher called me. We were able to make it happen. 
turns out he ended up being a college student next door at Dallas Baptist University. Come on, you can give it up. I am articulating this because he is a picture of your sons and daughters walking into alignment with what God has for them. His parents, his grandmother, I cannot take any type of credit, neither can our church. There is a call on the inside of him. He leads our prayer team. I want to get a, uh, I want to get a, a, a quick 30 second shout out. If you would bring your children next door, we as a team unified would make sure that they come back filled with the Holy Ghost, teaching and preaching, burning with fire. Just give us a little time. Taylor, I yield to you, son. So, Father, in this moment, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being our El Shaddai, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being our Prince of Peace, Father. We thank you, Lord, for being everything to us, Father. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, right now in this moment, as we pray for our generation, to fall fresh upon us, Lord. We say, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon our mind, fall fresh upon our bodies, fall fresh upon your will in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we can't breathe without you. Lord, we can't do anything without you. Lord, you are the air that we breathe. You are our all in all, Father. So, Father, we thank you for being everything to us. Father, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Emilio Shell. We thank you for being our burden bear. Lord, we thank you, our Shataya. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we lift you up in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you, Lord, to come down, Lord, to see about your generation. Come down, Lord, to see about your children. Come down, Lord, to come see about your people. Come down, Father, I shut so father in this moment I buy so hey God we say Lord hey God your word said that you will pour out your spirit upon your sons and daughters so father we thank you for pouring out your spirit father we thank you for pouring out your spirit father we thank you for pouring out your spirit spirit of the Holy Ghost fall Holy Ghost sit upon us Holy Ghost sit upon the school System. Holy Ghost, sit up on the college campuses. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy So, Father, we call down heaven and earth. We call down heaven to earth. We call down heaven to earth. And Lord, we bind everything that's come against our student. And I pick the blood right now. I pick the blood of our generation. The blood, the blood, the blood. 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 The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I pick the blood right now. Blood of my heart. Jesus of my heart. Mary's baby. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm a high Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm a high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so we praise you. And so we lift you up. Father God, Lord God, I pray for the remnants, Lord God. I pray for the remnant, Lord Jesus, of your sons and your daughters, Lord God, that have still not bowed the knee to Baal. I speak to those, your sons and daughters, who you have marked since the beginning of time to stand in this moment, in this hour, Lord God. It may look like we're surrounded, but we're surrounded by you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you would start to open up our eyes, Lord God, that when we see, Lord God, that it seems like there's more against us than there are for us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we would see armies of angels, Lord God, that when we're praying, Lord God, for our friends, that when we're praying for our siblings, that when we're praying, Lord God, for those that look like us, Lord Jesus, that we would see angels, Lord God, armies of angels, Lord God, that you have assigned to every single soul, Lord God. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that not one person, Lord God, that has been called to be saved will be left behind in Jesus' name. I decree and declare Lord God that every soul Lord God that has been assigned to the kingdom of God cannot be snatched by the kingdom of darkness cannot be snatched by witchcraft cannot be snatched by confusion cannot
cannot be snatched by mental illness, cannot be snatched by fornication, cannot be snatched by promiscuity. I decree and declare that the strongholds must come down, that the strongholds must come down, Lord God. Every lying spirit, every lying spirit is cast down, cast back into the fire from whence it came from. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that your fire, Lord God, would consume us, Lord God. We would not be consumed by influence. We would not be consumed by wanting to be seen. We would not be consumed, Lord God, by our ambitions, Lord God. I pray for a remnant that wants to bring you glory, Lord God. Raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, raise them up. May they know they're not alone, Jesus. May they know they're not by themselves, Jesus. Raise them up, unify us, Lord God. And just guard every mind, Lord God. Guard every household, Lord God. Guard every parent, Lord God, that you've assigned to these, your sons and your daughters, your precious ones, Lord God. Lord Jesus, restore the love, Lord God. Let there be healing, Jesus. Let there be healing, Jesus. I pray for generational healing, Lord God. I pray for generational healing, Lord God. Start with the parents, start with the grandparents, Lord God, and let it flow all the way down, Lord God. All the way down, Lord God. All the way down into there's nothing left, no stone left unturned, Lord Jesus. God, may this be the most healed generation yet. I'm decreeing that this will be the most healed generation yet. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to be obedient to what I saw in the Spirit. As both of them were praying, and as Pastor Torre said what he said, I saw prodigals. I saw sons. I saw daughters who were once on fire for God in their youth. There was something inside them, and you saw it. If you're a parent of a teenager, I want to be obedient. Please uh, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. You're okay. If you see a parent of a teenager around you, look around. If a hand is raised, extend your hands towards them now. Extend your hand towards them now. We're going to pray for their sons. We're going to pray for their daughters. Whether they're prodigals or not, we're going to pray that the fire like Jeremiah had, his fire was shut up in his bones. We're going to pray that that fire would well up again and that we would be true to what the firehouse is. Houses of fire. That we would see sons and daughters return. That they would become houses of fire. So extend your hands towards them now. If you see hands raised, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you had it on your heart to pray for prodigals. You had it on your heart. You saw this moment. That means you saw their son. That means you saw their daughter. God, you know their names. You know their thoughts. You know their rising. You know their falling. You know everything concerning their lives. There's not one thing that you've missed. And maybe we've lost hope. Maybe we've given up on our prayers. But God, in this moment, I'm praying that we would stir up the fire in ourselves to begin to pray for our sons, to begin to pray for our daughters. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the seeds that have been planted from the beginning of their lives, Lord, would begin to bud and burst and that we would see a harvest father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now that every single thing that seeks to devour the seeds God that you have put in these sons that you have put in these daughters father that it would be uprooted now in the name of Jesus God we thank you that we have authority I thank you for the unique grace that these parents have I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would recognize their assignment as parents that they are the gatekeepers of their homes and I pray that they would see that when they speak when they decree when they pray in tongues when when they are in the spirit, they are able to cast down arguments. They are able to cast down strongholds. Strongholds. I see strongholds coming down. A stronghold is a fortified argument. The sons and daughters might think. They might think that smoking, drinking, sex is going to solve their problems. They might think that. It's a fortified argument. But I see it in the spirit. I see it coming down. I see it coming down. I see it coming down. So Father, we seal this prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the next generation. And we know, God, that you're not finished yet. 
you've just gotten started. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We've got one more area tonight to pray for. And we realize once we get into praying, we realize that there's so much to pray for. Maybe that's why the scripture says pray without ceasing. Because we would be praying until the Lord came back, literally, if we were to cover it all. Uh, but this one is, is, is important to our bishop, it's important to me. It's important to a lot of the leaders in our church because we understand it. But we want to pray for, for business leaders, uh, kingdom business leaders. And, and one of the things that God has been showing me personally is how God's going to cause the kingdom to ride on top of business. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, so much theology around it, but, but even in some of the meetings that I'm having and, and just some of the people at very high levels, they're moving the earth. And God wants that every industry, every, every industry, every, everything in the world has a hidden glory in it and has a hidden glory around business leaders. And so I want to do this. If you are, if you are a business leader, uh, whether you are an entrepreneur, you got your own organization or you're an executive or you're just, God has given you influence in business. Um, I, I almost want you to come to the altar, but um, if, you're, if you just feel like, man, I think this is for me, you come to the altar. If not, just really connect with this. I want you to be where God wants you to be. But God's doing something. And he's posturing and he's, he's causing great grace and favor to be channeled towards those who are kingdom people and they've been placed in strategic places and he's going to, not going to, he's already doing it, he's channeling grace in your direction. And one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing with good soil and call leaders and and even the International Leadership Summit, that is a response to an insight pertaining to what God is doing. And I wanna say this to, to business leaders, and particularly executives in corporate America, you've, you've climbed up the food chain, or maybe you were an entrepreneur, you grew your business out. A lot of business leaders have guilt. Christian business leaders, a lot of times they have, they have guilt because they spend so much time at work and they spend so much time building and they spend so much time learning and reading and studying and networking and they feel like they should be in church more or maybe they should be serving some sort of way in church. Maybe they should be singing or maybe they should be preaching and the enemy gets in there and he starts lying to them because the truth of the matter is there are some people who are called to business and you will have more impact for the kingdom in your role in business than you would if you stood up here and preached a sermon. And God wants to affirm you in that and he wants you to not lose yourself, right? Stay grounded, but he trusts you. He gave you that grace because he trusts you. He knows that you can do it, that you can manage a pure heart before the Lord and kingdom priorities and go out and biblically do business until he returns. Mm. So I want to pray. I want to lead this prayer. And I want to pray for you. The first point of the prayer, I want to pray that you are affirmed. And I'm going to just speak out the prayer. So just receive. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, this is my prayer. I'm praying that you would first and foremost be affirmed. And the fact that God has called you to business and that business is not a dirty thing. Business is neutral. Business is a bridge. Business opens doors. Business open doors that you put in reverend on a business card will never open. Business puts you in places of impact. Business allows you to shape cities, communities, and even nations. So I want to affirm those who are called to the marketplace, I want to affirm you in it and that it is just as much kingdom as standing here with the microphone preaching the gospel. Are you hearing me? 
And there's so much theology around it. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to be bold. You're going to have to take faith steps because there is, a, and you've heard a lot of people talk about it, there is a wealth transfer that's taking place. But you're going to have to seize it. You're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to step into it. And you're going to have to, you know, a lot of times we have that Jeremiah spirit. God gives you a big vision. He gives you a big dream. He calls, there's a big opportunity. And you start talking yourself out of it. This, that type of thing happens for those type of people. No. You've been faithful. Your heart's been right. You've been loving Jesus. You've been pursuing Jesus. And so God's going to begin to open some serious doors. And I don't want you to talk yourself out of what God is bringing you into. I want to pray for balance. I want to pray that, that you would be disciplined in such a way that God will show you how to carve out time for him solo time for him that you would know when to stop when to pause that you would trust that you can pause and get what you need from God and then come back to the assignment so I want to pray that you have balance as well I want to pray for your relationships I want to pray that there's nothing within you, some brokenness that's, keep, that's keeping you from key and vital relationships and connections that you need to have in order to build what God is calling you to build. Sometimes the, the scripture says that those who will have friends must be friendly. And sometimes it is a, going to be a, a, a kind of a stepping outside of your comfort zone. To be open and available for the introduction to people and groups and scenarios that are a part of what God is doing. And I'm going to tell you right now, not all of them will be Christians yet. And so I want you to be open and that God would give you discernment that you might know what is for you and what is not for you. I want to pray that the Lord would bless you and increase you. I want to pray that he would multiply the seeds that you have shown. I want to pray that you don't give up in that you don't quit doing good, that you don't get weary in your well-doing because a due season is upon you. It's going to happen. Everything that God promised, I'm praying for your faith that your faith wouldn't fail, that you wouldn't cast away your confidence because God is channeling grace in your direction. I wanna pray for the one that has an idea that does not make sense. It seems crazy and ridiculous and out of this world, but you know that God gave it to you. I want you to cherish that idea. I want you to keep it in your mouth. I want you to keep speaking it and keep moving toward it. If God gave it to you, it will come to pass. It may be for, before it's time, but that's okay. You keep working it because the vision is for and appointed time though it tarry wait for it I don't want you to look at AI I got, we, we got to pray I got to stop talking but this is prayer I'm praying this over you look at AI I just watched an interview Jalen the other day and uh, and it was Reed Hoffman and he had counted a he, he's the one of the co-founders of LinkedIn he's a billionaire Silicon Valley billionaire and there was an interview where he had counted out artificial intelligence and he literally, he's on record 20 years ago talking about how, you know, people, be, you know, uh, being able to have an avatar that responds. He's talking about, he's basically describing what auto, artificial intelligence is doing right now. And 20 years ago, and watch this, and he was in the space. And 20 years ago, he couldn't see it. And now a large part of his investment portfolio is in AI because what he couldn't see then is clearly manifest now. And I just say that to encourage some people. It's supposed to be the never been seen before. Don't be. That's called a witty idea. That's called a witty invention. I feel that. And the last thing I want to pray is that God will give you the faith to sow 
when you have a knowing that you won't hesitate that you will invest in that thing that you will start that thing that you won't be outside of the timing of God that you will be quick to seize a thing so father these things I'm praying for these business leaders and these entrepreneurs, God, I'm praying for, for balance. I'm praying for, for faith. I'm praying for relationship skills, God. I'm praying for, for confidence, God. I'm praying that they would be affirmed in you, that business is a calling to. And I pray that you would cover them. And I pray that you would keep them. And I pray that you would give them discernment and insight and wisdom, Mara, that you would speak to them, that they would wonder how you know what you know. I pray, God, that, that you won't let any of their words fall to the ground, even the way that you do with prophets, that you won't let any of their ideas fall to the ground as you are their secret place, as you are their secret source, as they spend time with you in secret, receiving downloads from you and insight insights from you and instructions from you in secret as they come out of their prayer closet in secret and begin to implement those things that you show don't let anything fall to the ground cause it all to be fruitful <laughs> that's called letting their light shine that men might see their good works not basic works not ordinary works but works so good works so powerful works so productive that they will have to glorify you because it will have had to have come from you mm. and give them strategy on what to do with the success give them a vision bigger than their house and their car and the inheritance of their children Give them a vision for the nations. Give them a vision for countries. Give them a vision for continents. Give them a vision that will necessitate a billion dollar business. A multiple million dollars, whatever level they're on. Give them a vision. And let that vision be their passion. Let that vision be their grace. Let that vision keep them hungry. Let that vision be their assurance that you will bring it to pass. And for the one that was going to quit their business and shut it down, I thank you that they heard this message. Give them strategy. Marokosha, this is from heaven. Give them strategy as to how to restructure their business. Give them insight. Give them knowledge and tools. Let information come to them that they did not even seek. Let individuals come to them that they did not even look for. I hear the Lord saying, don't quit. It's just not structured right. It's just not set up right. It's profitable. There's profit there. You're just not structured for it. And here's another thing I'll say, and I don't know if this is from God, this is just knowledge. Don't sleep on AI and its ability to help your business at a fraction of the cost of hiring someone. For some of you, literally, artificial intelli an artificial intelligence product is going to save your business. Study it get with it don't be afraid of it it's not that hard do all this God and more for them in Jesus name amen 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 we got to do this more often because we've got a lot to pray about but here is the thing and in a moment we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings here is the thing we can do this at home and I know we do this. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Pray. Pray. I have, I have, I have a, a six-page prayer that I pray every single day. Every day. And y'all in it. Y'all in it. Seriously, y'all in it. Every day. 
We're going to do more like this. I know this is Pastor Sarah's vision and her, her heart. And we're thinking about doing it, you know, once every couple of months or something like that. Would you all come and, and we like really. And we just pray. And I'm going to say this. There's some prayer warriors out here. I know you're there. I know you're there. I just haven't met you. I can't wait to meet you. And not just prayer warriors. There, there's some, some people who are called to do a lot of different things. And, and that's why we've got the plugged in. That's why if you ever see the QR code, we'll put it up there tonight. It's not just a formality. We're trying to get to you because we need you. When God sends people to a ministry, when he sends people to a movement, it's not simply because the people need the movement. The movement needs the people. And it's our mentality and our philosophy to not say come and fit into who we are. Our philosophy is I need to find out who you are so that I can expand the capacity of the ministry to, to fit your unique gift. You understand what I'm saying? And so I, I'm excited. We're going to receive our tithes and our offerings uh, tonight. Anybody just grateful? I, I, I'm excited to not only honor the Lord with my tithe and my offering, but to sow into these things that we prayed. Do you know that when we pray, literally, it creates angelic activity. Did you know that? When we pray, those prayers are not just, just you know, hitting the top of the ceiling and then coming down uh, under a fog of optimistic expectation. No, those prayers literally ascend to heaven. There's a picture in the scripture of a, a bowl. And in the bowl are the prayers of the saints. Angelic activity. Peter was in jail and they started praying for him and an angel went to the jail, opened the door. It moves heaven. Something shifts when we pray, but we have to keep on praying. And we have to, watch this, we have to expect to see what we prayed. If you were burdened about something, and you came and you laid that prayer down at the altar. We ought to come up off that altar. I'm not saying that, you know, if, if it's grief, we won't be grieved. But we ought to come up off that altar in expectation of that thing being fixed. Don't pick back up and worry what you laid down at the altar in prayer. Why pray? No, when I pray something is happening when they came here and started decreeing for the next generation and started decreeing about prodigals and start decreeing about families and marriages no something is happening when we pray and we start praying about the governor and we literally we just claim the seat we just claim the presidential seat we just claimed it and look at how high that conversation was we wasn't talking about elephants or donkeys or blue or red or democrat or republican that conversation is too low kingdom talk is way above that that's how you know when somebody got the kingdom when they're stuck down here god bless them it's up here i don't want the person i want the seat oh god so we have to start claiming stuff the righteous shall decree a thing and it shall be established it shall up the kingdoms of this world shall be the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. We're going to receive our tithes, and it's worship. Once you have it, if you need an envelope, just lift your hand. PMTs will make sure you have it. The giving instructions are on the screen. Put some seed in the ground. We're so thankful for, anybody grateful for this church? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And we can't be grateful for this church without being grateful for our bishop, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who's, who's watching and First Lady Sarita Jakes, who's watching, good ground, full of integrity, making a difference. That would be reason enough to be a generous and a cheerful and hilarious giver in this movement. That would be motivation enough. But we do the work. Food in our house, not just spiritual food, although that is the most important thing but getting out there in the streets. Every time we see a need, every time we hear of a need, with United Mega Care, we're out there trying to solve it, trying to fix it. Uh, I'm grateful to be a member of this church. 
All right, if you have your offering, I just want us to stand because it is worship. And we're going to sow. They're going to lead us in worship. We're going to seal this in worship. We started it in worship, and we're going to seal it in worship. And then we'll get on out of here in the spirit of prayer and the spirit of optimistic expectation. Father, thank you so much for all, first of all, for allowing us to pray, for allowing us to be a part of your strategy for the redemption of the nations. Hallelujah. Father, it's so easy to be overwhelmed and overcome with thoughts of, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen and all this is going down as if you are not God. So God, we put our trust in you and our response to the pain, our response to all of the things that, that grieve us is prayer. And there is no better response. And we will put action behind those prayers. We will be what we have prayed until we see what we have prayed. Now, God, we thank you for your generosity in our lives. We thank you for the increase that we have. The reason why we have a tithe and an offering is because you've been good. And so we acknowledge it all comes from you, and we, with great cheer and delight, invest these tithes and offerings into the kingdom, into your storehouse, that there might be food in your house. And we do it, God, Lord, not because of what's going to come back to us. That's not the ultimate impetus. It's because we love you and we know it came from you and it's right. We want to see your kingdom come and we want to see your house be prospered and advanced, God, because as the church is prospered, God, under integrous leadership, then the world is prospered. But we cannot fail to accept and to receive the manifold blessings that come along with this. And so we do receive the fact that you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing we won't have room to receive. We do agree and receive that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. We do agree with and receive that our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. We do believe, receive, and agree that you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and all of the other manifold blessings that come along with this level of generosity. We thank you and we love you. Bless this church. Increase it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give family. Please pass your seat to the left. PMT, serve the people of God. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Lift the church, come on. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. One more time. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Raise your hands and sing it.
idea and the notion that we are your answer for everything that's broken and wrong with this world. You don't have a plan B. It's us. Hallelujah. And we're humbled by it, but the reality of it is it is true. Now, God, we thank you for this time of, of prayer. We thank you, God, for this time in your courts and in your presence, God. We thank you for the agreement Hallelujah. That has taken place in this house and ultimately through this house. And we thank you, Lord God, that we will not relent intercession and we will not relent from the becoming process mm, until all have seen <laughs> and to all know who you are. Lord, we love you so much, God. Continue to fill us, continue to feed us, continue to lead us. And that which you've done in our hearts tonight, God, may we not lose it. Lord, we know that there will be ample opportunities to be pulled to the left or pulled to the right, God. But God, we thank you that there is a, a divine intelligence that we've received, a spiritual insight and impartation, a strength a spiritual renewal in our connection with Jesus and our relationship with Jesus and the mission of Jesus. Mm. And we pray, God, that, that that understanding and that insight and that impartation would take root deeply and not be plucked up. Order our lips, order our tongue, Ima. May no corrupt communication come out of our mouths tame our tongue my shibra, that we would only speak what thus saith the, the Lord that we would only speak that which builds up and not tear down and father if we can do that if we can pray if we can love if we can guard our hearts and our tongue then I believe that we can show the love of God and as we show the love of God people will know that we came from God and if they know that we came from God then they will be open to God. We love you, God. God bless America. God bless the church. God bless the nations. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.